What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel and more bolt action coverage as we continue on with looking at market garden scenarios and content from that campaign book. So today we have an interesting one, uh, scenario 12, KSOBs, um, which are the King's Own Scottish Borders on Ginkle Heath. And the scenario is called cleaning or clearing, uh, rather, the drop zone. So we have an interesting uh, deployment setup for this where you have the Germans kind of occupying most of the center, central area, and then the Allies kind of deploying on one of the side areas, but not the full side, as we can see in just a, a narrow strip there. So deployment-wise, well, force-wise, let's, let's talk about that first. The Germans, um, you do have to have a fair bit of stuff uh, to run this scenario properly, but again, you could make some modifications and, you know, you don't have to necessarily, you can take the idea of the scenario and apply it to really any other area of the war and just come up with something unique and, um, you know, for the, the forces on hand, wherever else you want to try this. But for specifically this one, so you have uh, the German side, which is kind of a motley force here, but you have um, a company which consists of three platoons, each with three squads of seven riflemen and an NCO with an SMG. So, you know, if each platoon has 21 guys, basically, uh, 22 technically with the uh, NCO, then um, you got to really triple that, right? Three platoons, so that's well over 60 guys there, <clears throat> if we're reading this right. One squad in each platoon should also have an LMG. Each platoon has a four-man command group under a second lieutenant, and then the company HQ has a captain and uh, with an SMG and four riflemen on top of all that. So that's a fair bit of stuff, right? Um, so if you want to, you could probably, you know, based on what you have and, you know, you and your opponent, you could maybe cut the numbers in half for um, what is required here if you don't quite have that many um, models available. The British force is one company of the KSOB, um, um, the KSOBs. Uh, the company had seen extensive action in the previous 24 hours and consists of just three platoons as described in the air landing section of the force selector. You can reference that if you have the book. Unusually for a market garden scenario, they can include a free artillery observer and bombardment. So that gives them a leg up on the Germans. The company is led with a captain with two men in his immediate command group, as well as a company HQ section of 10 men with three SMGs and seven rifles. So this game is to be played across the breadth of the table, um, and by their very nature, uh, these uh, landing zones or drop zones have to consist of open ground, as in scenarios one and two. Again, go reference that. Ginkle Heath is exactly like that, um, uh, and it sounds like that. A uh, large expanse covered in heather uh, with a few tracks and surrounded by woods. It's not entirely flat, and there you got some low hills, uh, should be very low, should be placed around the table. The woods that surround the three sides of uh, the heath are... Um, very open in nature and provides some soft cover. One edge of the table is defined by a large embankment, part of an unfinished highway. So again, if we reference the picture here, you can kind of see that. So you got the unfinished highway here, lots of just little low hills, nothing fancy, and then some trees essentially outlining the rest of it as described. So the German troops were establishing themselves on the heath, but had not made any progress with digging in. The intention was to construct a position that included or extended across the heath to give good fields of fire against uh, the 4th Parachute Brigade as they landed and to provide a line that would impede their advance towards Arnhem. All of the German force must set up at least 12 inches from the woods and with at least 3 inches between units. The whole of the British force, in contrast, must start the game in the soft cover at the edge of the woods on the long side of the battlefield with the embankment on their left. Again, see the picture. Pretty simple there. Now, the KSOBs, as far as objectives go, must attempt to destroy or drive off the German force before the arrival of the 4th Parachute Brigade, and the Germans have to basically try and stay and retain that position. So, first turn, all the troops on the table are on the table from the very start of the game, so no reinforcements, um, per se, uh, or hidden troops or anything like that for this one. Now, the duration, once again, speed is key for the British. They have to get the Germans out of the way before the 4th Brigade start their drop, and they don't know precisely when that will be. Um, so, um, basically both, uh, the, uh, the Brits and the Germans will become aware of their impending arrival as the noise of the Dakota aircraft would be hard to miss. So at the end of turn three, you start rolling D6 on a one, the air fleet can now be heard in the distance and the parachute, uh, or paratroops will be making their jump at the beginning of turn four. If the air fleet has not made their presence felt, uh, then on turn four, um, you roll a D6, um, a score of 1 to 5 indicates their arrival, so it actually jumps up pretty significantly. Um, and then they arrive in turn 5. If they still have not come into view, throw a D6 at the end of every turn until they do so. So 
Um, so if you roll high, basically, if you keep rolling sixes, they won't show up, which um, obviously delays them. So, but uh, moving it to a one to five is an interesting idea because normally things just escalate by one, right? It's like roll a one, and then if not, roll a one, two, then one, two, three, and stuff like that. Here they actually take a different tactic and we can take that idea and apply it to other similar scenarios as a, as a new way of making arrivements or uh, I guess arrivements, uh, reinforcements uh, arrive sooner. So an interesting concept there. Now, how do we win this scenario, depending on who we're playing? Regardless of losses, the British gain an automatic decisive victory if they can destroy eight German units before the first paratrooper jumps out of an aircraft. If they do, the Macht Battalion has had enough for one day and beats a hasty retreat. Failing that, both sides count one victory point for every enemy unit destroyed and one for every enemy unit that is down and therefore not engaged at the end of the turn preceding the arrival of the paratroops. The Germans also count two victory points for any a unit that is free of pins at that moment, since those units will undoubtedly be able to cause major damage to the pair troops as they hit the ground. The player with the greater number of victory points is the winner. So pretty simple. So kind of like a kill point mission in that sense. We want to kill the opposing side as much as possible, but with a couple of little wrinkles, right? So if the Germans can stay pin free, they have a way of getting some extra points. Now, and the other factor here is, you know, units that are down essentially also count as, um, uh, scoring for the other side so you know be very be uh once you get to turn three and four and beyond you want to be uh, very wary of taking down as a um as a reaction uh as that you know could that the opponent some free points should be fine in the first few turns but just something to keep in mind so fun little scenario that does if you want to play it the way it's described here does require at least like 60 plus guys seemingly on each side so not something for everybody if you don't have that large of a collection yet but as we said we can just divide it by um you know really what you have available for you and your opponent or it could be one where, you know, you bring in, uh, so just making a two-player game, make it a multiplayer game if you don't have enough models yet, you know. So maybe uh, most people should probably have around 30 guys. So just make it uh, two two people aside, and then that should probably get you there. So fun little scenario, something to try. Uh, let us know if you have had any success with a scenario yet, guys, and how you would run it, or any changes you would make. And again, we can factor in all the different ideas for scenarios that we've seen from other uh, other missions, other campaigns, just general rules for the game, right? So, you know, we could try this with night fighting. We could try it in other bad weather types or just a different theater and just other neat ideas. So let us know what you think. Drop some comments, guys. Like, subscribe. We'll have more Bolt action for you soon.